Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Link Frequency and I'm Aishwarya Pattar. Today we are going to proceed further with our course that is Artificial Intelligence for Absolute Beginners. We are going to learn about machine learning, why machine learning is very important and why is it a training topic nowadays, followed by the workflow involved in machine learning process. And then lastly, we are going to cover about different types of machine learning. Without any further delay, let's get started and understand these topics in detail. Alright, I hope my screen is visible and you can see the topic machine learning. So today we are going to cover this machine learning topic in different subtopics that is firstly we are going to understand why machine learning is very important for our study and why is it a trending topic and then we are going to understand the workflow, the different steps involved in machine learning and lastly we are going to understand the types of machine learning. So without further delay, let's begin with our introduction part. As I had mentioned in my previous videos uh, that machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. It actually focuses on uh, development of a computer program or an algorithm that has an access to the data and using this data, it tries to you know, build a model which can predict the further unforeseen data. So it's like the ability of the machine to adapt uh, and improve its experiences uh, from its past training data and now predict the desired output without the human intervention. So machine learning is more or less like a self-learning model uh, which initially requires the training set which has to be uh, fed to the system. So that was the part of introduction. Now let's move on to the part of why machine learning is so important and what factors are making machine learning a very important topic in our days. So we will try to cover this topic in two different formats that is we will firstly understand the global data uh, that is the market data analysis and then we are going to understand different reasons that are going to support why machine learning is going to be a very important topic. So in global data. Uh, we all know that the pandemic has uh, been a very important factor for the organization and business to select machine learning and they are trying to take this machine learning into their business model so that they can improve their performance. So out of which you can see 51% of the organization are already using machine learning in their business. So out of which 15% are sophisticated users that means they are using machine learning on a higher terms. Whereas the remaining 36% are still at the beginning stage uh, where they have just taken up machine learning into their business. The remaining 49% of organization are still in an exploration phase where they are still trying to uh, you know, discover how they can uh, uh, take machine learning into their system and uh, into their business so that it can be a very beneficial for their overall performance of the business. So this was all about uh, the organization level. Now let us look into the global market data. So the global market data of machine learning is growing at a CAGR of 39%. In the year 2019, we could see that it was around $8 billion. But by the end of 2027, it is expected to reach around $117 billion. Looking at this data, now you can see that there is huge scope of learning in this domain and this domain can uh, have a very good knowledge based uh, experience for the uh, newcomers who are interested in learning machine learning. Yeah. Now le let us proceed to the next, uh, the different re uh, regions that are going to support uh, why machine learning is so important. So the main factor for uh, companies to adapt machine learning is because of its uh, adaptability factor. Uh, it can be easily uh, combined with the business uh, of any organization and can be used uh, to help the business grow faster. And the complex solving capability of this machine learning in a very effective and efficient way is a significant part of machine learning. Uh, why? Uh, I'll explain you. Uh, for example, consider uh, your, you are having this uh, process which has to be done over repetitive times and you have uh, you are actually using a human uh, resource over there and it's quite possible that uh, whenever the human resource is involved there might be few errors. So uh, and because of this the process also can be delayed. 
successful to overcome the situation what you can do is you can automate this process and make the uh, make it very faster uh, so one more advantage here to this is uh, automation of your repetitive task which is again a specific task oriented uh, process and next re- uh, reason for this uh, use of machine learning is to overcome the process of traditional method of learning uh, if you are not aware of traditional method of learning let me give you a slight uh, understanding on this topic uh, okay uh, for example consider a traditional method what happens is uh, your input is uh, data plus the program you are going to feed into the system and then you are going to get the required output whatever has been desired so when i spoke about the program here what exactly it means is each and every line has to be coded by the programmer to get a required output so uh, if it is a simple problem then it be- it is a very uh, easy task to go through a traditional method but if it is a complex problem then it becomes a really tedious job to use a traditional method so uh, we had uh, trying to shift it to machine learning method so in machine learning method what happens is uh, we have the data and the output which is fed to uh, which is uh, fed into the system and the system is trained on that data so after the training we will get a model and this model is used further if there is any new input coming up then we will use this model to predict the required output so what happens here is here you don't have to program uh, the model but the model learns through its previous experience and its previous data so that it can analyze the future data coming up based on its decision making process in the previous learning history so this was all about a uh, traditional and machine learning approach so now you can see the major advantages uh, you are going to eliminate the process of writing the code to uh, get a required result so yeah so this was all about machine learning uh, uh, factors which are favoring that it is a very important uh, concept and if you know any other uh, things which are very important to be added up uh, as an important factor for this machine learning then do comment below in the comment section so now let's move ahead to the workflow so workflow uh, is the step by step process of how machine learning is going to happen so machine learning is going to happen in seven different steps uh, usually what happens whenever you talk about machine learning you hear people saying that we have to have a training set and a testing set and we have to use a model and ultimately we'll get a finalized predicted model which can be used but this is not the process you know this is not the right way to get an accurate uh, model whichever has been expected so instead of that we have to follow a uh, seven different steps which will lead us to a model which is very efficient so those seven different steps are data collection data preparation choosing the right model training the model evaluation parameter tuning and lastly the prediction so now let's look into each uh, step in detail so beginning with the first step data collection so as the name itself suggests that you have to collect n number of data from different sources for your problem so already you have a problem and you are trying to solve that problem using machine learning concept right so in this first step you have to fetch relevant data so which is relevant to your problem statement because data also is a important factor for you to get an appropriate model right yeah so uh, here what happens is data collection process is a bit lengthier process because you have to collect each and every data which will be important for your problem statement and also it depends on the quantity and quality of your data so if you have a huge number of data then it will help the model to you know learn uh, for a longer period of time and use that learning experience to have a better results and if it is uh, and the quality of the data also matters like the the data should be in a very organized format so that you don't have uh, any blind spots in your model so that is the first step of data collection and you might uh, wonder like data collection uh, should be uh, done in a huge uh, term in terms so where we can fetch the data so you don't have to worry there are different sites which are providing you the data sets which can be used for your problem statement so if that data set is favoring your problem statement you can directly take it from those sites and start uh, building your project based on that data set then next moving on the next step is uh, data preparation 
So here what happens is you have to wrangle the data and prepare the training data. Here uh, you have to make sure that the data whichever you have collected in this data collection phase is cleaned. What I mean uh, by cleaning is you have to remove any duplicate entries or you will have to uh, manage if there is a blank space or if there is an error uh, in the collected data you have to rectify. So basically it's an organization of your data. So this data can be organized in the form of tabular column, uh, uh, tabular format or a columns where this uh, format is being used by the training model to train. So it becomes very important that you uh, have a particular rule or a uh, format which will help you in aligning to this process. So data preparation phase is very important uh, in terms of data organization. So uh, next, moving on to the next one is choosing a model. Okay, once you have understood your data set and you have understood your problem statement very well, now you can select a model. So model selection is again an important uh, phase because uh, here, depending upon your uh, problem uh, statement uh, and how you're gonna tackle the problem statement, you have to select an algorithm. The algorithm can be a uh, part of uh, regression or classification. You can select any of the al algorithms, whichever is going to suit better for your problem statement. So that understanding has to be very clear before selecting any model. So next, moving on to the next step is training the model. I personally consider this training model to be a very important phase because here there is a lot of training process happening. And if there are multiple iterations happening, then these are called as training steps. And training steps will help the model in understanding the data set in a better fashion. So also the next uh, thing about the training model is that a uh, training model is a very patient and experimenting process. It's similar to a child uh, learning bicycle. You know, uh, initially there will be a lot of difficulties the child has to face. Uh, in order to learn it in a better format but uh, eventually whenever he practices it uh, more often he will get used to it and he will learn the process and he will try to be uh, you know more uh, better in that uh, riding of bicycle similar thing happens in this machine learning goal so uh, here in this training model you can treat it as a new uh, new beginner for example you are teaching that uh, beginner in a step-by-step -step process so it becomes very important that you teach it in a good format or you train it in a good format. So initially the while training you might feel that there are a lot of errors which are coming up or the, mod, uh, or the model is not being appropriate uh, to your training set and all. But uh, gradually after rectifying and experimenting a lot uh, with your data set you will definitely find a, a good trained model. So next moving on to next one is evaluation. So after you have trained the model, it really becomes important that you know whether this trained model is going to be effective in the real world situation. So what you have to do is you have to put this model into a situation where it encounters any unforeseen data which is not being trained and you have to check whether it is going to behave or give the desired output for that data. And uh, if the results are uh, appropriate, then your trained model is successful. And if the results are not as per your mark, then what you have to do is you have to revisit the first uh, steps, whichever you have done. And if you have to try to, you know, uh, find out the root cause for your underperforming model and try to rectify it. So that is a part of evaluation phase. So here it is basically correcting your prior mistakes uh, if there are any. So next, moving on to the next step is parameter tuning. After you have successfully completed the evaluation step, then only you can move to the parameter tuning. Here basically what we are doing is we are going to improve already uh, got model uh, whichever is having a positive result. We are going to improve those uh, positive results in a much better way. For example, uh, how you can make this more uh, efficient is through uh, the number of uh, training steps whichever has been given. You can just have a trial and error or an experimenting uh, kind of thing over this and you can find out a particular scenario which will suit best for your problem statement and it will give you a very accurate results for your problem statement. So that was all about parameter tuning. Then moving on to the final 
step that is prediction so prediction is considered uh, to be a step where the model is finally ready so here the model is finally independent of any other human intervention now it can take decisions based on its previous learning and experiences and its decision making process so if there is any unforeseen data coming up ahead in the future so it is capable enough to predict what will be the outcome in this process so these were the seven different steps which are very important to have a very appropriate model which is a uh, more accurate also to tackle your problem statement so you shouldn't uh, miss any of the uh, steps uh, which are shown here so that you are not going to miss uh, the accuracy of the model so moving ahead i had explained in data pr uh, preparation that there are going to be two different data sets so let's move into what are the two different data sets over here the data set uh, it can be divided into two things that is training and testing so training data set is nothing but you are going to use this data set to train your model with the predicted outcome or the whatever predicted analysis you want so you are going to use this data set to train that particular model the next one is testing data set here what you are going to do is you are going to use this data set to confirm whether the trained model whichever already you are having is it capable enough to uh, you know react to the real world situation because ultimately whatever you are doing in this machine learning is to uh, focus that you are going to solve a real world situation or a problem so machine is going to uh, take the decision on your behalf so you have to be sure that the machine is capable enough to take decisions so that is the part of testing so whenever you are in the phase of uh, data preparation you can divide your data into two uh, two that is training and testing in a ratio of 70 30 or a 80 20 based on your problem statement and based on your convenience so as already explained in my previous videos that there are four different types of machine learning in that first one is supervised learning second one is unsupervised third one is semi supervised and last but not the least reinforcement learning now let us look into slight details of what exactly these uh, types mean so supervised learning so as the name itself indicates under the supervision of something so in machine learning terminologies it is like uh, the training data set is labeled and the outcome of this data set we already know like for example consider we want an outcome as dog or a cat we already know the outcome so we are feeding uh, some unforeseen data and we are expecting that it is going to categorize based on whether it's a cat or a dog so input is labeled and output is already known to us so next uh, type is unsupervised learning here what happens is we are having a training data set which is completely unlabeled so here we are allowing the algorithm to understand the data understand the pattern in the data and then classify the data accordingly according to the features whichever it has been trying to segregate so that is part of unsupervised learning so here the machine is trying to segregate uh, or classify the data for you then next one is semi supervised learning as the name itself indicates it's a combination of both supervised and unsupervised learning so it would be a combination of both labeled and unlabeled data in its training process and lastly we have the reinforcement learning Here what happens is uh, this is the next higher level of machine learning where we are actually letting the system the learning system to interact with the environment and observe each and every tiny detail in the environment and then take an ideal decision and uh, come to a conclusion based on the inputs from the environment so here this system is majorly going to take decisions on a trial and error basis and it's learning and the learning happens majorly on the trial and error basis like the uh, the learning machine is going to observe each and every details of the environment and then these uh, details are fed into the system and whenever the similar situation occurs it's going to react in a similar format and this learning uh, is very iterative process thank you so much for watching this video I hope this video was very helpful for you to understand the concepts of machine learning. If you like the video then do subscribe and comment below in the comment section. Tune yourself to make a difference.